The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In our previous episode, we began working on the IoT on Wheels design challenge for Element 14. We started working with the ST Microelectronics Nucleo 64 dev board along with the low energy Bluetooth module, and we programmed them using the Embed Online IDE. We also got started on a case design for something that can clamp onto your bicycle and be used to interact with your phone. Yeah, and in this episode, Mr. Badley's gonna come by and he's gonna show us the app that he's come up with, mm -hmm. and we'll also button everything up and take it for a test. Sounds like fun, let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Felix, can you give me a uh, recap of what's been going on? So we've got more boards in. Mm -hmm. uh, we have actually three working sets of boards. Uh, your original mock-up. Oh. Uh, I built this mock-up and uh, Mr. Badley's got one as well. Oh, we have more than one Nucleo now. Yep. That's handy. Multiple Nucleos and multiple uh, Bluetooth boards. Redundancy. Yes. Redundancy beyond the redundancy. It turns out there was an update to the uh, embed library. Oh yeah, I heard you talking about that last week. Yeah, it, it uh, kind of set me back a little bit. Oh, that's it, unfortunate. Yeah, it uh, took me a little bit to figure out. Actually, Mr. Badley is the one. He figured out that the, uh, the reason nothing would compile was because of the version change. Great. Um, but we've resolved that. <laughs> I also found a new um, Android Bluetooth app, except location service needs to be on. That is weird. Yes. Are these just four bits? Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, so it's showing the hex value and then an ASCII value if applicable. Yeah. Um, one thing I was gonna, I haven't, I have yet to look into is disabling the Re programming header. That part? Yeah, either breaking it off or we, we might be able to adjust these jumpers or something. I think I can it. fit it all without, without having to worry about that. Okay, and remember the battery goes into E5V. I don't know if you wanna use this battery or the other one that we had selected earlier. Actually, let's get one of those PCBs and hack it up. Hey, you wanna saw it along those lines for me? Okay. I wanna get the base case uh, printed. Yeah. Uh, once we get that started, then we can work on other things. Hey, let's do this. Let's, um, that thing you're hacking up? Yeah. Oh, let's, this. yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, work with that and figure out where to put the on and off switch. Okay. We can be a team. Give us any chance, we'll take it. Oh, pretty good fit. Upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. I think the switch down here someplace. Well, if we did it like that, we could make it flush. See? Mm hmm. So to bend the contacts down. Can you give this? Yep. Yeah, give the corners a little bit. Here, take this with you. Yeah, check and see if that fits. So you can see if which fits? Uh, the PCB. It fits. Okay. It's Fitz, like a, like a German name? <laughs> My name is Fitz. Oh, wow. Oh, no, I want to eat you. Oh, egg and my face were in alignment. Here we go. So this is gonna go here. And we got that piezo there, so I probably wanna put the power switch over here. Can I use your pencil? Yes. This is how we used to have to draw in the olden days. This is how we say goodbye in Germany, Dr. Jones. I like the Austrian way better. I'm a Blade Runner. And this design is in millimeters. So let's just get the offset here. I think 30 millimeters would be good. Oh, something else we could do with this, Felix, is um, we figure out where this is gonna be, and then we can figure out where to put the piezo on this board. Of course, one problem is solder pads are on this side. Of course. So if we put the piezo through there, we can't solder to it, but we should. But most of the components will go through the top, such as the switches. I'll get this piezo off of here. Okay. Because I think we only have one of these. Yes. Do you mind if I cut this hole out, the circle, for the... Uh... No, go ahead and cut it out. Just uh, do it nicely with a knife. That's what I will attempt to do. I want that paper pattern to look... Let me guess, shiny? Yeah, shiny. 26.78. Oh yeah, I remember that all right. It's tricky using the metric caliper because the tens are different. It's actually, you know, one place down from the uh, SAE. Bravo, well done, great job. Tim and Eric, great job. 
Rules, rules. Yeah, I wonder if we could like put some uh, leads up to interconnect it right there, because it's on it's on tens. See, mm -hmm. I mean, I could do it if you want to do something else. All right. Yeah. Here's the piezum. Cool. Uh, let's get the switch in place first. I bought all of the super glue at the hardware store the other day. I don't know what happened with this stuff, but it's like doubled in price. Used to be you get like two tubes for like a dollar ninety eight. Now it's like one tube for two twenty nine. For a while, I was able to find the gel style at the dollar store, name brand. Yeah. Just, this guy has absolutely no faith in the gel style. I hate the gel style. Glue. I know some people like it, it's not for me. It has its purposes. Yeah, and the landfill. Well, this isn't working worth a tinker's dam. Maybe if you tried some gel style super glue, it could work. Listen, I don't, this heretic glue, I don't believe in it. Here's all the things I put onto the board. Okay, so we have left LED plug, right LED plug, rumble shaker plug that attaches right there, the four buttons, EEPROM, vibration sensor, tilt sensor, this is the battery plug, the um, battery charger, then on the back just a bunch of various connections and pull-ups for the buttons and stuff. Of course we have the piezo here, so it all fits together as so. This plugs in here. Loops around like that. Piezo goes down the back so it can be heard. I wanted to get all this together before I did the um, next part of the design just to make sure I you know, had room for everything. I've done multiple tests with the buttons. Um, this seems to be the best. So I'm using Ninja Flex so it has a good feel. I made it fairly thin so it can fit up inside like this. And then it will go over the buttons like this. So while that's going, I'm also working on my main case. Then we have the buttons here. I only drew them on one side because it wasn't necessary to do the rest. Then we have these pieces that go over the buttons. I've printed those already. And yeah, I wish this stacked thing wasn't so tall. I mean, <laughs> if you didn't have all these breadboards on top of each other and dev boards, you know, this thing would be really thin, but that's not the case, is it? Yeah, so here it is in wireframe. Up here, these are our two light holes. On the back here, we have the USB charging port, the power switch port, which I had to subtract from the main uh, body as well. So yeah, all told, the case is one, two, three, four pieces, plus the uh, mounting and alignment brackets. And of course, we have the piezo hole down here at the bottom. Hey, Mr. Bailey, can you uh, show us the Ionic framework? Sure. Mostly this is development in uh, TypeScript and um, HTML, uh, but there, Ionic puts a bunch of stuff on top of that. So one of the neat things about the Ionic framework is that we can do the development and see it uh, within a web browser. So oh, I'm cool. developing an iOS and Android app, but I can see it and work on the interface and make it nice and pretty uh, within the browser so I don't have to recompile and download and go through all that time consuming mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, we've improved the interface a little bit. I've got outputs for the left and right LEDs. I can turn on and off the siren and the buzzer. And then we've got this shake alarm active. Mm -hmm. So we don't want the shake alarm to be going off every time you go over a bump on when you're biking. We only want it to have to be activated when you've parked your bike and you want to know when someone's trying to steal it. Right. So this toggle lets you turn on and off that shake alarm activation. And then we have a log of previous events and we've got our settings where we can set which which button does what action. Oh cool. So if we wanted button one to to do a point of interest or a pothole or advance to the next song or whatever. For the alarm active action, we've got a couple extra events like activate the phone alarm. So this way if the device is shaken, then it will freak out on the device itself, but it'll also send a text message to okay. the tablet or the your phone to let you know, hey, someone's trying to jack your stuff. 
And the programming is all HTML and uh, JavaScript. So um, you can see here's the, the meat of our Bluetooth stuff. First we scan, and if we find the device that we're looking for, then we'll try to connect to it. And once we're connected, we turn on notifications for the input. Then we look at which input was pressed, and based on which input it was, we perform that action. Uh, we're also looking at the outputs to know if the alarm is on. And then for each of those perform actions, what we do is we go look at the setting for that particular button and see whether it's a pothole or send an email or send a text message or based on the setting for that particular button, we do that particular action. All right, Mr. Bed, let's see the features of this app. Okay, so if we press this connect button, then it will scan and hopefully find the device that we're looking for. And it did. Cool. Yeah, so let's see. So that first button did a pothole. Cool. Hey, There's the message. email. Second button was a point of interest. Third button is play pause. Fourth button is next. So let's do that pothole again. And there's that message telling me a bike riding citizen reported a pothole at the following coordinates, and it included my coordinates. And if it tilts over, then it will send a text message saying, hey, your friend needs help. Oh and my. it even gives a Google map with uh, directions. Cool. I'm going to have to go save you. Yeah, it's way better when it's not attached to a bike. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. I'm really excited to see what other people come up with. Right, so let us know what you think about this project and the design challenge and the embed, embedded suite on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Ah, darn it. That's a great chat that I'll definitely use. And my mouse just disappeared. We're getting back to our mini pinball build. Last time, we used MATLAB and Simulink to make a simulation of the pinball game. I'm going to be working on mechanisms. Uh, we're going to have something that affects the ball, like a pop bumper, something that reacts to the ball, like a target, and then also I need to make the ball loader launcher mechanism to cycle through the states of the game. Felix is going to be working on a new revision of the PCB. Yeah, that works pretty well. Look at that. Click, 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 click. That will stay in place until the pyramids are dust. Wow, look at all the points we're getting. <laughs>